Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. You know, every once in a while, if you have access to equipment like this, it's really nice to sneak in a job for yourself so that you can maintain your sanity. Well, I got a, I got a knife blank from a friend the other day, and he said, why don't you put a handle on this? I want to see what you can do. So the opportunity has presented itself, and I'm going to throw a handle on a very unique looking knife. And chances are, when I'm done, I'm going to give it away. So we'll get into the details of that later, but I'm going to uh, splice a couple of videos here together, probably have to fast forward some of this stuff. So take a look, uh, tag along, and I hope you like what you see. Hey guys, for the knife project, all I used was uh, 3 8 by 2 brass flat stock. Put it across the bandsaw, I cut off a couple of 5 inch long blanks, and then walked it over to the CNC and profiled the handle to about two thirds of the final depth. Let's take a look. The blank that I just did on the CNC is eyeballed since I'm going to put a drum sander on this and clean it up anyway. Now we're going to locate all the holes with a pin and the chuck. We're going to find the holes. Nothing precision here. This is just going to simply transfer these holes into the brass one at a time with a pin and a corresponding drill. And to thin it down, this is all I did to thin it down. Clamped it on the ends. Thinned out everything I could thin out around the clamps. And now I'll just reposition these accordingly, clamp it here, and knock off the high spot, finish it out by hand. I am planning on putting a wooden, and that would be one of these handle blanks here. I'm going to take a chunk of this material and I'm going to inlay it right here. But because of the difference in hardness between the wood and the brass, I'm going to put my large radiuses on the outside of the, of the back before I channel this out for the wood because if I try to do that I have a feeling that whatever abrasive I'm using on the brass is going to dig in aggressively to the wood and I have a much better chance of a smoother edge if I do the radius on the brass first. So give me a few minutes and uh, we'll see what happens.
working. That's going to do the job just fine. I'm going to put the two handle sides together and make sure that I have uniform rounds on it and that it is relatively clean. I may cut this back and then we can start to uh, consider putting the inlay in. Well, I like the rounds on the handle and this is a perfect example of what I was talking about with the center channel relief that I'm going to put in this handle. You can see that as the wheel enters the part, it leaves a substantially larger radius than the consistent radius or semi-consistent radius that it produces going down the back. Now if you're going to do this to a piece, uh, leave it a little bit longer so when you cut it off, the radius starts clean. So I'm going to lop off about 300 thou on the front of this because I knew this was going to happen. And that's a perfect example of what they call bell mouth if you were to be lapping out a hole or polishing out a hole to get a specific size the lead of the hole is always going to be a little bit bigger than the uh, main bore of the hole because of just this the ramping of the abrasive as before it makes full contact so if this were a hole that would be called bell mouth it's a pretty good indication or a pretty good uh, example of exactly what that is all right keep on plugging Well, when you look down the backbone of this knife, I want you to see the blade tang that continues all the way through to the end of the handle. I want you to see two thin strips of brass and then the wood on either side of the brass. So it's going to look like a sandwich. And the only way to keep the cuts true from side to side, well, the easiest way anyhow, in my opinion, if you don't do it when you profile the handle, then this is the way I choose to do it. I cut a trough in the fixture right here. I'm going to use two pins in that trough and just by applying gentle pressure to it you can see how it registers. I'm going to put a toe clamp on either end. Naturally I'm going to toe clamp the butt end of the knife first making sure that it stays true to the fixture and then I'm going to relieve the center out and record the dimensions on my digital readout so that the center will be a very thin leaf and the ends will be just as thick as you see here. Let me finish the setup and I'll film the cut. Okay, this is what we've just achieved. Now you'll see the blade running down the center of the handles. Actually okay, we'll have a thin strip of brass on either side of the steel. And we'll have the wood inlay on top of that. These will be riveted, peened, cleaned. That ought to be some spectacular knife when it's done, just saying. Might actually keep it. Ha, huh, maybe. Okay, the wood has been sized and laid in the cut. I've traced it with a Sharpie marker. And although I'm going to use a drum sander to finish off the final blend, I would like to get a little bit closer than what I have right now. And I'm going to do that on the bandsaw. So let's take a walk over to bandsaw and see how that's done. 
after a little bit more mill work on the brass side plates and a little bit of bandsaw work on this wood we've got the wood inlaid into the handle nice 060 line of brass going down the back that looks real nice and I left a little bit of room on the front here I'm gonna go in there with a small drum sander at assembly and since the knife blade blank is harder than everything else when this goes on here I can use the knife edge as the guide for the sanding wheel and everything should come out real nice. Now I like the effect of the backbone of the brass alongside the steel. That looks real good. And I will put a couple of uh, rivets right here. That's the plan anyway. I may change that up but I think a couple of rivets right here would look really nice. This is epoxy then. These uh, blanks spent the night under seat clamp pressure. It's a five minute two part epoxy and they is really strong. So that's not going anywhere. I'll sand this down flush, blend in all the rounds and we'll glue this thing up and uh, put these cross pins in. Tap those down to match the pins in the handle. Buff everything out and it will look pretty good I believe. Getting there. Not bad for first try. This knife is pretty long if you're wondering how big this thing is. Let's see if we can pan out in some scale. That's a pretty good size. I'm not exactly sure what this style of knife is called. I know it does have a specific name. And this uh, handle here was inspired by the classic buck folding knives of the 70s, I guess it is. Alright, stay tuned. I've got the wood cleaned up, got the epoxy cleaned up, and this particular operation here I'm going to epoxy the brass and wooden inlays to the steel backbone of the knife and I'm going to line it up with the back since that's the most visible part. When I clamp it I'll make sure that this back rides about as smooth as I can get it. And any work that needs to be done will be done back here and underneath with the drum sander when it's complete. But I like the way that looks. That little thin strip of brass running along the back of the knife with the walnut inlays is just beautiful. I am very pleased with that. Okay, let's mix up some epoxy, stick this thing together, and revisit this in a couple minutes uh, YouTube time, but it's going to probably be a while real time. A lot of the cosmetic work has been done to the handle. The inside was cleaned out with a drum sander on a Dremel tool. Got the pins holding the sides. Actually it's epoxied right now so it's fairly secure without these pins but it's always nice to pin it so it doesn't move if you want to bang nails in with it or something if you're so inclined. I'm going to peen these over, file them off, shine it up and uh, call it a day looking pretty good at this point.
Uh, well, I got to say, that was a fun project, and it came out even better than I thought it, it would. You know, I had a couple of problems with it uh, that I didn't film, and just to be honest with you, completely honest with you, I had an end mill grab a hold of the brass part. I had it held down with a pair of clamps, and when the end mill hit it, the whole thing twisted and shook, and I lost about four pounds in sweat in a nanosecond, so that was oops number one, but there was plenty of material left, so it didn't ruin the part. And the second one was when I was gluing the sides to the blade, I had uh, gauge pins in the holes to keep the dowel holes lined up after the fact, but I knew the epoxy was going to leach into the holes and glue the pins in place, so I pulled the pins. And of course, since it was a viscous surface, it had a tendency to migrate and the handles didn't line up the way I had hoped they would. But thank God for disc sanders and belt sanders and everything just came out absolutely perfect. I mean, after all, it's a knife handle, right? It's not a rocket ship. Anyway, I think it came out good. I hope you like what you saw. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, 16,000 subscribers coming up, and I just can't tell you how flattered I am by your support. So thank you very much. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.